Okay, hi everyone. It's Linda Kanasi with iCrafter. We are on YouTube. So now, okay, I think it's going live. Um, there we are. Okay, so there's a slight delay, and I'm sorry, I have my laptop to the side here, so I'm trying to get everything to coordinate. Hello, and and I, I will get all this working, I hope, hopefully a little bit better or smoother. I'm trying this whole YouTube thing, um, and I'm using it with an iPad, an iPhone, and a laptop here. I feel like I'm in a control room. And all I want to do is make a fun craft and show you how to make something fun for Halloween. I am going to... Um, hi Amanda, I think you're there. Happy Monday, yes. Um, so I'm sorry for the delay on me answering hellos and everything, uh, but I'm here, I'm working it, I'm trying this. I am, okay. So what I am going to make today, let's see, hold on. Okay, oh, oh, someone else is there. Terry? Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Terry, thank you so much for joining us um, in the UK and it's nighttime. Let's see. It's 6 p.m.? No, it's got to be later than that. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for joining us. And again, I'm going to have to work this out because I apologize that I have to look to the side to see comments, but I am so happy people are joining us. It is so exciting here. Um, I am going to, uh, meanwhile, I'm trying to get this to look a little smoother. We'll see how that happens. But what I want to do is I'm going to um, share, first off, uh, the dies that I'm going to use in this project and I realize there are quite a few because I love using little bits and pieces of our holiday Halloween collection uh, on projects because they all blend together and work really well together but I wanted to feature um, a really nice die uh, from Lori Whitlock which is a bag with a uh, bow so let me start off let me move this where can I put this here Put it over here. I'm going to switch the camera down and show you what I'm working with today. So this is the Bag with Bow by Lori Whitlock. Oh, you know what? Um, and this is uh, a beautiful, actually a really beautiful um, die because it creates this really nice size bag. So I am going to... Um, I think maybe it's easier for me to just jump in and start showing what I'm going to make with this bag. So what I did, I'll set that aside, and I cut, you need to cut two of the main die shapes of the bag. And they look off center, but that's because there are seams on there. Let me show two. Um, because this is a Lori Whitlock uh, die, I decided to use uh, Lori Whitlock design paper from Echo Park. It's Halloween magic. Super cute stuff. I love, I love how cute this, uh, her designs were on this. So I basically used what I um, wanted from her dies or from her papers. So I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see. Let me bring it up here. Oh, yeah, you can see. There are crease lines on the side, okay? So what you're seeing is this crease line here and this uh, crease line here. So you can see that there, there it goes down. The triangle pieces are right here. So what you wanna do to start is to fold the long part. Okay, um, and let me set this aside. So you want to do the long part, and now again you have um, you have another fold here, 
but you want to fold that to a valley fold. And you don't want to go all the way down. You want to just start folding the top part of it until you get to these little angle folds. And then you do you do a little, um, I always call it hinting or hinting to the paper where you want it to end up going. So it'll come down until it gets to that intersection right there where the angle folds are. And then you want to do it as V folds where it'll, uh, later on, it'll be a lot easier because once we build this, there's also a fold along the bottom. And I always use my eye press burnisher to create some really crisp folds. So I'm gonna go back. Okay. And on the shorter side, or on this side, there is a little fold here to create a tab that we're going to glue. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna repeat the same thing on this side. Do the long vertical fold. And then I'm going to do a partial vertical fold till I get to those angles and then convince the paper that this is where they are going to want to fold later. So, and it's just um, the basic shape once you start seeing it come together is like a grocery bag. If you've ever, um, if you're a crafter, you've probably done this, taken apart a grocery bag to use for the brown paper part or um, who knows anything that we do with brown brown paper bags so okay so once you have all the folds sort of um, everything in place we are going to start assembling it now um, I don't know if Rebecca's here I hope Rebecca joins us from um, Make It by Marco and I have my glue stand over here so what we're going to do is we're going to add adhesive along this short little, um, or this narrow tab, I should say. Okay. And we're going to basically create a full bag. And this is the, again, the Lori Whitlock um, bag with bow. And we are going to mix it up with some eye crafter designs as well. So this is the easiest way I find to make a full, um, I guess a full shape, is that once you have one seam down, it should all line up if you fold it partially again. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so now that this is all correct, you should be able to just fold this down and complete the shape, all the dimensions should be exactly right. Um, okay, bye Terry, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, oh, it's 7 p.m. Okay, in, in the UK. Okay, so now we have a tube. You can see the bag is taking shape. So the next part is I folded in both of these side pieces. And you can use tape, strong tape's good. I, again, it's just easier for me to use the liquid adhesive that I have sitting around. Um, and while it's still wet, I'm going to make sure and square it up like it's supposed to be. And this is another part where the eye press burnisher comes in really handy because it reaches down into the box and you can get nice crisp corners pushed down with it. So it's pressing from the inside. Again, you have that nice flat area and it's putting pressure in there and I don't even have to look at it. And I have that going down. So now we have the bag and you'll see again, just like a paper bag, you can fold these little a little crisper to get that shape. And I mean, how simple is that? You have this this nice little, I call it a little trick-or-treat bag, basically. Um, I've made another one ahead of time, so I have two, because I had two ideas of some Halloween designs that I wanted to do. 
And again, this is her uh, bag with bow. There's nine dies in this set. So I'm going to set this aside or up there now. Um, okay. So I only need one of those. These are some of the shapes that I, I cut out from her um, set. And this is the bow. And with this, I'm just going to start curving the bow part. And you're going to do it much more, but I'm just starting it off with a simple curving of it. Now, what you want to do is from the inside part, put a nice blob of adhesive in there and glue it down. I'm going to do a little more. So I hope everyone's having a good, I guess, a good Monday. Um, I'm just, I guess this is really, um, it's really interesting to me to test out how to do, um, a YouTube live and it's coordinating with a Facebook, um, what, Facebook, uh, event and just trying to get everything to work together is really interesting, so... Okay, so I did the exact same thing with both the large and the small bow shapes because we're going to do a multi-layer bow, if that makes sense. Um, there is, okay, so other parts of the bow to note. There is the back part, and then there is this tiny little piece which is going to create the wrap around it so let's do this okay so now that we have the bigger shape we're going to put a blob of adhesive in the center and we're going to I'm going to flip this over so it hides the seam why not so I'm just kind of sticking it together right like that and again you could use any type of strong adhesive I think my thinking is the liquid adhesive is good because you could still smush it around a little bit um, before it dries. And you could reshape these as well. Next thing, I'm going to uh, add some adhesive right there and stick that down there. And you can see how the bow has come together. Um, what I could do, give me one second and I will... Well, that's, you know what, here, another great thing with our eye grip tweezers, that can hold that while it's drying, and I come up here and there, ha, yes, that is why you have an eye grip tweezer, so you have extra pair of hands while you're adjusting your camera angles, <laughs> so, anyway, so that holds that. Now, you do one last thing in the center. You want to put a little bit of adhesive there and put, start this shape. And you can see where it goes like that. And it's going to wrap around. But you can see where this bow, there's so many um, possibilities with this. I mean, I'm using it on a Halloween idea, but how cute would this be for birthdays or Christmases? gifts. Okay, I'm wrapping the edges to the back and I'm going to add a little adhesive on the back to hold that down. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Amanda. Yes, it is super cute. I mean, Lori did a beautiful job on these and I wanted to make sure and showcase that um, her dies work really well with the with other eye crafter dies. There's so many possibilities with this. And I think I think this one is working on it's gonna go on this one, so I'm just gonna keep building on this. The next thing I did is that from the let's see, this came from the tags and label die. Uh, let's see, I could do it that way. And you get if you want to count the small one, you get one, two, three, four 
tags and some interesting label shapes and then you get the hole protectors um, in here. So I'm using the uh, the smaller shape die and I am going to I die cut it out of solid purple cardstock and again it matches her her design and then I also took and I have that here too the uh, alphabet Haley outline and it's the whole alpha, uh, capital letter and alphabet and it's really nice because it's skinny enough that you could do um, I know it looks funny right now but you could do boo <laughs> like that and buried in my little jar of uh, I forget what you called it Amanda you said it's the die wrangler dish um, this is my die wrangler or my die cut piece wrangler dish <laughs> um, Okay, so this is going to layer like that, and I th these extra pieces came from when I die cut it out. These are extra pieces from the letters, and there's so many variations you could do from that. Um, so let me do this. Now I'm just laying these in here right now because I have other things I want to add to this. So one of the things I want to have the ghost coming out from be behind the letters, um, I'm going to add a bat and maybe even have a spooky hand coming out, not sure. And so let me show you where everything is coming from. Oh, I also have a larger pumpkin. So the pumpkin... Let me get this straight because there's some really fun pieces. The pumpkin is coming from the Halloween Treat Lantern die set. And you see him there. Now there's different types of bats that I've designed for various pieces. Um, this bat is coming from the R Ribbon Rosette Holiday add -on, Halloween add-on. And it's a little bit of a more dramatic bat in there. Um, so it, it all kind of varies depending on what you want. Uh, the ghost is coming from the um, tunnel card base, sorry, tunnel card insert, Halloween insert. So we have this ghost coming up. He's a little scarier and he is coming at an angle, which is die cut jail. <laughs> die cut jail, yes, the die cut jail. Um, so the Ghost is a little spookier, so I decided to have him flying out from there. Uh, the hand, if I add the hand, which I think I will, because I absolutely love this um, hand, is from the uh, mini Halloween hauntings uh, set. And the reason I love the hand is because you can actually add some dimension to it kind of thing. So let me go ahead and start gluing this down. Um, I'm going to have to decide do I want the boo I guess I want the ghost coming out that way so he looks like now yeah, would the ghost come out that way I don't know sometimes I try to think too logically um, I think I'll do it this way okay so he'll come in front of the centerpieces so this is where I want to first off I don't want to glue the green to the purple background yet because I want to put the ghost in there, but I do want to get these pieces glued down in the center. So I'm just going to add a little adhesive, glue it down, hold it all straight, I'm trying to get it as straight as possible. And like I said, the ghost is going to come, I decided in front of the center piece. Just add a little adhesive there. And all of these center pieces came out of the, um, when I cut out the alphabet, the Haley alphabet. So there's nothing, nothing exceptionally uh, mysterious where that came, these pieces come from. It's just you decide which parts you want to 
save and add back in. So, and now I'm upside down. So, here's a little weird fact about me. I was actually uh, born left-handed and switched over to being right-handed. So, in a lot of ways, um, I'm either ambidextrous or I'm, I call myself left-brained because I will do things left-handed without thinking about it. And it's kind of weird. So, okay. So there's the boo. Um, now I'm going to add the ghost because I want the ghost to come out like that. So he's coming out between the words. So, so we can actually... Okay, I have an idea. Let's add the adhesive here. The only part that I'm not going to add adhesive is between the two O's because that's where they, the word or the ghost is going to appear from. So I can do it between there. Okay, let's try this. So... Of course, I didn't compensate for where the hand is going to come out from. But, okay. So there's that. We don't have any adhesive here between there. So the ghost it will come out like that. So he's going to be partially adhered. Right? Yes. Now that we have that, let's go that way, and we're just going to add the ghost like that. So now he is coming out from between the words, and we're going to just add the bat somewhere here. We're almost done. Um, with this tag, it's just a little bit of embellishment. I'm going to overlay it on the O a little bit so it also looks like it's coming out. Um, the pumpkin I'm going to do at the end here, maybe. And the hand. The hand. Where is my hand going to come out from? You know what, Amanda? Just thought of this. It would be cool to do lights, your lights on these little tags like this. Because then you could hit the lights and the word boo could light up. Ooh, just thought of that. Um, oh, really? You're th oh, you're left. Oh, I, that's right. I did see that you were a lefty. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I got in trouble in, not trouble, but in high school, the last day of ceramics class, um, I was trying to use the uh, potter's wheel and it kept coming out crooked and I asked the instructor, you know, the teacher, what am I doing wrong? And she watched me and she goes, are you left-handed? I said, no. <laughs> and she said, because you are, the wheel is spinning for a right-hander and you're using it left-handed. Like, okay, that explains a lot. So, anyway, not sure where I'm going to have the hand come out from. But I think what I could do is add it to my bag first. So one of the things you, know, you could do, okay, I'm going to add him a little crooked like that, like that, and where? Bow goes where? Um, this is where you design at the end. Let me move it up so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I could do the bow down there. Um, I could add the bow up here. You know what? I'm going to wait. And the reason I'm, go I'm going to wait is because I have the second bag that I'm going to make. And I may want to move stuff around and see where it goes. I also have some green, oops, some green ribbon that I may add to something. So I'm going to design it as we go. Um, but I'm going to get the secondary dye jail, jail out here. Um, and I'm going to be working with the darker purple one. Um, 
Okay, YouTube is not receiving enough video. So I hope everyone can see this. Um, I don't know what that means, but I think it's freezing some places. So I'm just going to keep working um, and hope everyone can see it. What I did this time, I used the apothecary labels, and this has interchangeable pieces. Well, you could either use it as a full label or you could drop in the words. So what I did, there's a piece down here is the one that I used. I cut the die out and I cut a solid piece and then I cut the same shape out and I took this and I don't know if I, oh yes, okay. So I took the die piece that says trick or treat because this is from the Ribbon Rosette Halloween add-on. And these pieces can be used to cut out anywhere. So I took this one, there's no blade on the edge, and I laid it on top of, basically it was a solid um, label, and then I recut it, and I got the words to come out from there. So you don't have to use the Ribbon Rosette or these interchangeable words uh, like uh, only on their shapes. So here is another label that I made and I'm just going to I'm just going to start putting this together. Oh, okay, great. Thank you Amanda for letting me know that it's going smoothly. Um so and what I would say is definitely take your time and add the adhesive very carefully. <laughs> I'm just kind of applying it rather quickly so that it will do what we need it to do. <laughs> so I'm just layering that together and wiping off a little extra adhesive. So I have that and smudging that around. And again, I cut the same tag because this is going to be something, um, they're going to be similar in that respect. I also cut a spider Love that. That came from the, uh, from it's also from the Ribbon Rosette die set. There are a couple of spiders that I have, um, but that's from that set. I also, from the mini Halloween hauntings, I cut a spider web. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm just going to, again, build another bow. So I'm just going to do this real quickly. If you have any questions, um, let me know. So, goodbye. The, by the way, these are my vintage um, Pyrex dishes that are my die jails because I love vintage things. So, okay. I, again, I'm just going to keep working, doing the same thing, creating a bow. And I'm not quite sure where everything is going to go, but... Again, this is, this is my, I think crafting is such an experiment anyway, so have fun and just make things. <laughs> so, but I do want to stress that there are so many fun things um, to mix and match, and that's the important part, is that um, just because a die says it's a bag and it has a picture of uh, a birthday theme on the front of the packaging, you don't have to think of it just as a birthday theme. There are so many things you can do with this. Uh, you know, picture it for Christmas or um, obviously Halloween, but you can just do cute little little gift notes to people. Um, so it's just kind of fun. And that is like the main thing that I'm trying to express to people is that there's so many fun things you can do with these dies. Now, I'm doing it this way because I want the bats to be facing upwards. So, oops, I also want it to be on camera. So I just kind of rotated it around until the bats are facing upwards. Not super critical, but it's just one of those fun little details you want to include. Um, same thing that we could do. We could do a whole bat there, or majority of the bat, or we could do stars. I think I'm going to do the whole bat. It's just, 
Again, this is Lori Whitlock's um, paper for Echo Park. Uh, it is called Halloween Magic. And it's so adorably cute. Oops. I just love this bow. It's so easy to make. And just, there's, I could see a lot of different uses just for the bow. I'm going to adjust this and then use my secondary hands right there. So while that's drying off to the side, let's let's see how we want to do this. I'm going to do the trick or treat at an angle. I'm going to do the spider web and I don't know. I want the spider against the orange because it is a dark color. So I'm going to just build it like that. Um, oh, and thank you, Amanda. Yes. Um, yeah, the decor, the interchangeable pieces. I just love doing that because I want things to mix and match and just have so many variations that you can do all kinds of fun things. Okay. Now, Again, you could do a little bit of foam to lift this up there, I guess. But I am going to, um, I'm going to add glue. I think again, this would have been a great place to add um, some foam, and I'm leaving this area clear so that it could hang off the tag, and not, okay, and not have glue behind it. So, and. I want the spider web to be a little bit on there. Now, the other thing, too, is because I do have the ribbon, I could tie a little bit of ribbon to this. Um, it's, I'll see what I choose to do. This would have been a good thing to maybe do um, our eye stick adhesive sheets on this. I didn't think to do that, but... Um, Okay, I'm going to make it so that it is kind of sticking to the label right there. So it looks like it's actually part of the label. And then set that aside. Maybe I need two of these tweezers because I need extra hands, even more hands. And again, you want to do this with a lot more... Um, maybe care than what I'm doing. I'm just going fast so that I could show you. I'm going to go this way um, and just have my little spider there. Speaking of spiders, I was sitting here at my desk working and all of a sudden a spider, a little spider sat down beside me and so I went to take it outside and as I did, it had beautiful aqua blue eyes and it was well and they turned out they weren't the eyes but they looked like two aqua blue eyes it was so strange it was actually called a jumping spider and harmless to humans um it startled me i'm sure i startled it but he went to go live outside <laughs> hopefully he likes it outside but just the fact that his eyes were this uh, aqua blue it was just stunning love that that was so cool okay so now I'm thinking orange would stand out and purple would stand out there do I want to switch even the tags I haven't decided yet no I think I need to keep this tag here oh I should show you <laughs> so right now I have the the this tag on this one with an orange bow and putting the purple bow on this one. I haven't glued down some of the pieces on this yet, but the other thing too, like I said, I have some ribbon and I don't know, maybe I'll add some ribbon to this one. Let me just get a piece. Let's see. Do that. Da -da. I'm going to cut a piece off. So let's finish one at a time because I think I'm going to add the green ribbon to the purple bag. So, okay. 
So I have the hand sticking out from there, from inside here, which is <laughs> kind of interesting. So I'm just going to glue them down from back here. And get stuck down there. And then I'm just going to glue the tag down. And you could you could tell now where I'm going with this project. It's just kind of a fun um, bag or yeah, a little bag with tag idea. So I don't know if having the hand over this opening is the best idea right here, but that's where it ended up. I'm going to do the bow. I like everything kind of. No, I like it at an angle, but I think I'm going to do that one like that. Yes, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Pumpkin face goes here. And again, these are all from, or majority of them are from different sets. And I love being able to mix and match these things because that is what the whole inspiration of crafting is about. So, just like that. Okay, so, I put some adhesive on the flat part of the back ribbon of the bow. And let me get that in there. And just kind of holding all of that down. You could press from the back side inside the bag. But you could see there's one right there. So let me set that aside and decide how I'm going to do this one. Um, if I'm going to tie a ribbon, I don't know, maybe a ribbon around the whole bag. Um, or is this redundant? Um, oh, hi, Shirley. Yeah. You know, I agree. It was sort of being forced to be right-handed. Um, but <laughs> it's funny when you think of all the memories of the times you do you did things left-handed and didn't realize that it was odd. It, I, I, I don't know. You know what? I'm not loving this ribbon idea. Um, one of the things is when, uh, to this day, when I do um, uh, filling water, in a, a pitcher or something or liquids I always do it left-handed and it drives my family crazy <laughs> sorry but I am who I am um, and it's just kind of let's see I'm trying to decide do I want the bow to be lined up with the tag or with the words or do I even want the bow maybe I want the bow up here again this is just kind of having fun with how it looks. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just playing with it. Um, going back into the uh, left-handed conversation, um, it is it is strange. Uh, it wasn't as acceptable to be left-handed uh, when I was a little kid, but. It's much more acceptable now. Um, I mean, I when my son was little, it was interesting because they taught us to uh, embrace the fact that your child might be left-handed. So when you handed them something, you put it right in the middle and let them choose which hand they took it from you. And I thought, oh, that is so clever. So, okay. But again, like I said, to this day, I confuse my family by grabbing things left-handed and leaving things for a left-handed person. Oh, well, they deal with it. They still love me. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm just adding this, some adhesive. I'm going to tip it again because I want it to be an accent to there 
And as you can see, I added the bow on top. I decided not to use the ribbon. I guess I could have tied the ribbon to the top of this tag, but you can just see all the fun things you can do with this. Again, this is the um, Lori Whitlock bag with bow. And I just wanted to explain too that you can use this bow on so many other projects. It's not just to be used with this bag. It's just an additional feature with this set that there's a ton of things you could use the bow for. And the bag, amazing stuff you can do with that. Um, oh, I'm glad you like the bow at the top. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> oh, okay, Amanda, I, I saw that something about nuns and I thought nuns, but I totally understand. Yeah, it's, it's, they left handed back then was something that you just didn't do. Or I guess because nowadays they have scissors for lefties. They have all kinds of stuff for lefties. So it's much easier. Lefties and proud. I guess that's it. Um, okay. So there are my two bags. I'm going to okay. I'm going to switch the camera around again. So So just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's watching. Uh, these again are the Lori Whitlock dies from iCrafter, the bag with bow. Um, you can see there's a ton of things you can do with it. We um, have so many different things from iCrafter that just mix and match with this fun Halloween look. So um, you could just make a ton of these and um, you know what? You could even die cut an opening in the side of the bag before you assemble it and put a little faux tea light in there. Or even uh, the easy lights from Pear Blossom Press. There's a thought. <laughs> there are so many things you can do with this. I just wanted to share that and share how easy the bag itself is to assemble. It's just a lot of simple folds and a little bit of glue. Um, and the bow, even the bow is so simple. So um, just wanted to share that. But, oh, I should mention too, in the typical uh, Lori Whitlock fashion, there are a ton of additional pieces in there. There's little, let's see if I could get it. There's little tags, tag, tag, oops, tag. Um, there's words and there's a flower. Um, the words are, you could do two from or with love. There's a flower, there's little bits of leaves. You could see that on, um, tink doing it backwards um so there's a lot of little things you can add to this uh so i just wanted to share that there it's we always try to do things that are so versatile that once you have this as a base die there are tons of things you can keep adding to it seasonally or birthdays year round just i mean it's a perfect size to also hold a gift card so you might want to fill it up with a gift card so that is the bag with bow from Lori Whitlock through from iCrafter and a ton of um, iCrafter Halloween dies. So I want to say thank you so much for watching. Hold on. Oh, hi, Cherie. I know those bows are so simple. Um, so I just checked all the comments. And again, next uh, next week, be sure and join me again. And I will have the laptop in a better position so I don't have to keep turning that way to go read the comments and see what everyone has to say. Let me try, let me try one thing here. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Have a great week. Um, have fun crafting, everybody. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, see you next time.